And welcome back, everybody. All right, let's turn our attention now to some of the more local races you need to know about tomorrow. Well, today, I don't know what this is. Okay, let's um, pick it up here in Nassau County here. Um, and we're going to focus on the county executive race. And that's Ed Mangano and Tom Swazi. Um, these guys, four years ago, the, this was decided by less than 400 votes. I remember this is one of the races that kept us up late here. Tom Swazi, uh, very um, uh, well thought of county executive time at Balanced Finances, but he had political ambitions beyond Long Island, ran and lost spectacularly um, in the governor's race in the primary to uh, the eventual winner, Elliot Spitzer. We know how that turned out. Um, but that ended up when he was running for re-election where he lost to Ed Mangano, who came out of nowhere, and the polls had it all wrong. Mangano won, as we said, by the slimmest of margins. Well, today they face each other yet again, and we want to bring in Jody Goldberg right now, who caught up with Ms. Mangano just a few minutes ago. Jody? Good evening to you, Rich. We're here at campaign headquarters for Republican current county executive Ed Mangano. Earlier today, he cast his vote, the most recent poll numbers leading up to Election Day. Show Mangano ahead, certainly very different than it was last go around. Well, the number one issue is property taxes, and uh, I held the line on property taxes for four consecutive years. And first administration actually give money back to our residents by uh, repealing Tom Swazi's home energy tax. And you'd say this would give you an edge in the election. Absolutely, I believe. And now four years ago, this was the tightest race in our region. Mangano eventually claiming victory by fewer than 400 votes. And tonight, his campaign is hoping to take a more decisive and quicker win. That's the latest here at campaign headquarters in Bethpage. Jody Goldberg, Fios, One News. Rich? All right, Jody, thank you very much. And uh, on the subject of, of Tom Swazi, you remember him. Uh, he was being talked about that he was, his political star was on the rise here, that he was going to be one of these fast risers. But part of the trick of politics is you got to pick your, your moments and your spot. And he timing, didn't pick it right. Timing, yeah. timing. You're, indeed, Richard, you know, you, you're not underestimating this. This guy was almost viewed as walking on water. Tom Swazi, let's face it, he's got the look, he's got the sound, uh, comes from the right demographics for, in terms of the state where he could really catapult himself into statewide office. But he, he violated, if you will, rule number one, which is you always make sure that, that you're on solid uh, you keep standing. Job. Yeah. That's right, back home. And so he barely lost the last time. This one, I have a funny feeling, is not going to be as close as it was the last time. It comes down to did he make a rationale to replace Mangano? And we'll find out very soon. Right. And there's only been one source of polling in this race, and that came uh, from the Newsday and Siena poll. They had this race even on primary day in September, but their last poll, they showed Mangano up here uh, by double digits, by about 11 points here. And again, both camps cautioned me that the numbers were wrong in the past. That all said, um, Ed Mangano again acquitted himself uh, pretty well um, post the storm. Um, and Sandy was a very big presence there. Uh, there's been some criticisms, they're not long-term planning, but again, one of those subjects we'll talk about more. Then we go to Westchester County, and the race for county executive there features the incumbent Republican Rob Astorino trying to keep his job in a very Democratic county. He faces Noam Bramson. Uh, he's the mayor of New Rochelle, one of the bigger cities in the county. And Phyllis wins Carolyn Fortino. She is at Astorino headquarters in White Plains, New York, with more there. Carolyn? Well, good evening there, Rich, and that's right. The race for Westchester County Executive has been called one of the most hotly contested races in the region. And tonight, Republican incumbent Rob Astorino will be seeking re-election. Astorino took office as Westchester County's executive in 2009, running a campaign based on protecting taxpayers, preserving essential services, and promoting economic growth in the county. Now, during the past four years, he says he's kept his promise, reducing the county property tax levy, starting up programs to help small businesses, and creating more than 27,000 new jobs in Westchester. Now, Astorino's Democratic opponent, Noam Bramson, the mayor of New Rochelle, criticized Astorino's stance on a number of issues, including a housing discrimination discrimination lawsuit, cuts to essential services, and his views on abortion and marriage equality. Now, Astorino's win in 2009 was considered an upset, partly because of the county's Democratic registration advantage. Now, no independent polls have been done in this race, but both campaigns give Astorino a slight edge. We're live at the Crown Plaza in White Plains. I'm Carolyn Fortino. Rich, let's send it back to you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one to watch, and Andrew, for me, 
Um, this has to do with math. It has to do with national issues. It has to do with, um, at the end, this started off as a local uh, race, um, about, but it also had a national issue, the housing desegregation mm -hmm. uh, lawsuit. But then at the end, uh, Noam Bramson made it about more of a national one about labels. He said, Rob Astorino's Tea Party with a Smile. That was the ad. He said, he's pro-life. Um, he's against gay marriage here, um, and he's standing with the Tea Party across the board. Whether that works or not, we're going to find out in a few hours, but at least that was a change, I think, in tact. You know, for our viewers watching in New Jersey or watching in Connecticut or New York City, wondering why do I care about a county executive race in, in north of the city, it, it is because it's about local issues, but it's also about all of those national issues. Yep. Locally, Astorino shouldn't stand a chance. It's a two-to-one registration advantage in Westchester County, uh -huh. and he won this four years ago from a three-term incumbent who... Most people thought it's just time had passed, uh, and he's gotten the seat. And you know, it, it's the economy is better four years later than it was four years ago, though not in great shape uh, by any means in Westchester County. Then you add the housing suit. Then you add other uh, stones that he's thrown at the Obama administration. And then you throw the labeling by, as you mentioned, Noam Bramson calling Astorino a Tea Party guy with a smile. It, it's very interesting. Will local voters? go for those national issues or will they say stay locally and say you know what i like this guy he was in my community he certainly played to uh some of the uh the minority communities in the big cities uh in in westchester county new rochelle yep. uh and yonkers in and, mount and mount vernon yep. uh, he's got religious leaders uh supporting him Astorino, it's absolutely. a very interesting dynamic and richard another reason why i didn't mean to cut the congressman off but another reason you mentioned why voters in new york city and the surrounding area should care about this race because when it comes to Astorino, this is the one Republican that's being touted as the guy to take on Andrew Cuomo, mm -hmm. possibly. Now, that might be a stretch. Well, there's few Republicans with statewide possibilities, and, and for years, uh, really since he won with a huge surprise four years ago, um, they said this guy could be one of the few guys. He's a downstate guy here who may have appeal because he's legitimately conservative with his credentials so he can get through the gauntlets that the Republican primaries. The looks. He's a likable guy. But last last Republican guy. governor of New York came from Westchester County. Yep. George and Pataki, but, uh, that's people right. say if you do the math, uh, you know, the Astorino record doesn't add up here. Um, but as we've seen, uh, sometimes personality um, and you know, if you come across as the genuine article, it's hard to lose as an incumbent if you're not a hard guy to like. Yeah, but and this is an important position, mm -hmm. and people care about local issues. So, you know, accusing him of uh, being, you know, against abortion or whatever, it has not a twit to do with running uh, the yeah. county. Not anything but to do But you wonder how many voters will see that or will vote on that basis. I don't think they will. Hmm. Because... I think they care about what's happening locally, as long as he's not beating his chest about it. Mm -hmm. And he's not. In fact, we, we, I interviewed both the candidates in the, uh, just last week, um, and it's funny, Rob has to do this nuanced thing where he has to be true to what he is, but also to say it doesn't matter what I think because I'm it, not shaping the policy it on... It doesn't. Uh, now, there was one issue with the gun shows and whether or not gun shows, and it's a county executive decision, whether or not there was a 10-year moratorium that uh, had been put in. He basically opened it up again for them to be there. He made the claim that he put more safeguards in and background checks uh, than were in other places in this country. It was an issue certainly seized on by his opponent here. So there is some elements, uh, for example, uh, also on the issue of abortion in terms of clinics, who could and couldn't protest within a certain distance. There is some county rule to it, but by and large, these are national issues. Um, okay, speaking of national issues, not all races are local here. When we come back on RFL here, we were going to be talking about that. And also we posed your question today. And it's a broad one, whether it's on the county level, whether it's on the regional level, or, or even on a statewide level. Who did you vote for today and why here? We want to know what issues drove you here to the polls and what mattered most. All politics local here? Or were you making a vote on an issue nationally in the direction you want to see us go here? Facebook and Twitter, wide open here. Make your opinions heard. Okay, when we come back here. We're going to be talking about some of the big national races, but also some of the key ballot measures. These are some of the things I find most interesting that will come out tonight. Everything from more casinos here to also minimum wage, keeping up with the rate of inflation. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back.